Well, children, having studied about the invertebrates very exhaustively, we shall be knowing something about the chordates. Are you seeing so many animals on the screen here? All are chordates. Look at the word here, chord. The very word is indicating that they have a special feature of having the notochord and the nerve cord. The very first specimen that you are supposed to study in the lab is the scoliodon. It belongs to the superclass species. So here, the superclass species, it is differentiated or bifurcated into the chondrichthyes and osteichthyes class. The word chondro refers to cartilage. Ichthyes, it says it is fish. So this is a fish which is beholding the endoskeleton as cartilage. This is osteichthyes. This rather belongs to osteichthyes. Osteo refers to bones. Ichthyes says it is fish. The endoskeleton of this particular fish is made up of bones as well as the cartilage. So let us have a look at what's the feature of this particular scoliodon. You see, it's sharp. You can also see it's a dogfish. It's exclusively marine form. The body is very much elongated, streamlined. It's a streamlined. The very body shape itself is enabling this fish to swim against the water current. Now it's dorsoventrally flattened in the anterior end, but laterally compressed in the posterior part of its body. The body is divisible into head, trunk, and then a tail. When it happens to be the chondrichthyes, the special feature that we observe is they have a very lengthy tail. Next, the whole of the body is enclosed by flat, plate-like scales, and they are placoid scales. Very important feature in the chondrichthyes is that they have the mouth and the nostrils located on the ventral side of the body. You can find there is presence of a pair of the eyes on the dorsal lateral sides. Just behind the eyes, are you able to count the openings? They are the gill slits, they are of five pairs. It's visible only in the cartilaginous fish, but it's not so in the bony fishes because they happen to be covered by a lid-like structure called the operculum. Well, the locomotory structures of these fishes are fins. But how do you identify that this particular fish is a shark. Look at the fins here. It has unpaired fins, one dorsal fin, one another dorsal fin, its second dorsal fin there. Then you can find there is ventral fin. These are unpaired fins. Coming down of the paired fins, one present in the thoracic region, its pectoral fin. The other one in the abdominal region, it's also paired you call that to be as pelvic fin. In the tail portion, wherever we use the word aura or quadra, it says it is tail. In the tail portion, there is presence of another fin, it's heterocircle. So it's caudal fin that's available there. So this is the external feature that you would be observing. See, you might remember in your younger days, if you were asked to draw a diagram of a fish, you would write a fin everything and on the lateral side you would draw one line and the same line is available here. It extends from the eyes till the tip of the tail and that's what is said to be the lateral line. This lateral line is meant for the perception of the variations in the water. You can call it to be as a Rio receptor. So this is the scoliodon. The same with the explanations there. See, the fish that is available, like the scoliodon, it's sexually dimorphic. The male and the female would be differentiated looking at the morphological features. When we observe the male fish, there would be a pair of the claspers, which would be helping in copulation. This is how the sexual dimorphism can be observed there. 
So this is the shark, readily swimming. Have you observed? The mouth is ventral in its position. Even the nostrils, they are ventral in their position. That's the main feature there. Then you can see the caudal fin, it's heterocircle. And the gill slits, they are naked without the closure of the upper kilin. And you can find this shark or the cartilaginous fish doesn't behold the hydrostatic organ. So while swimming or to stay stagnatedly in one particular position, continuously it will have to move its tail there. And that's the shark. Come to the next specimen here. It's labio rohita. You call this to be rohu. Rohu, katla katla, mrigala. These are all the freshwater fishes, bony fishes that are available. Even here, the body is streamlined and it is laterally compressed. And it's divisible into head, trunk, and then the tail. You can find the scales over here, they are cycloid scales. And then the eye, nostrils is dorsal, and mouth is terminal. Mouth is terminal. See here, there is a structure called operculum. There is a structure called operculum. This operculum, just behind the eye, it's a structure that closes the gill slits. If you have observed in an aquarium, the fish is a bony fish, it keeps opening the mouth like this. The mouth is terminal, rather it's at one of the tips, terminal, okay? And then just behind the eyes, one of the structure keeps moving like this. And that is operculum, where the gill slits are there, they are being enclosed by the plate-like structure, that is operculum. Then paired fins are there, pectoral and pelvic. Unpaired fins that are present, they are dorsal fin and then the ventral fin. There is a caudal fin, this is homocircle. It's homocircle. That's it about this particular fish. Well, our next member is also a chordate, belongs to the class Amphibia. Look at the term Amphi, it refers to both Bia, Bios, it says it is life. So the member who is here is Rana Tigrina. The body consists of head and a trunk. There is no tail. So you call this to be as a neuron. A says when you have a prefix A, it says it is absence. Aura, it says it is tail. The tail is absent in this. What do we find in the head portion? Have a look at it very clearly. It's one pair of the eyes. The eye has the eyelids and special membrane called nictitating membrane. Then the ear is closed by a thin fold of the skin. It's called tympanic membrane. The whole skin is glandular. There would be mucus that gets secreted there. So one pair of the nostrils and then there is presence of a wide crescent shaped mouth. When I say crescent, it is half moon shaped. Wide crescent shaped mouth. In the trunk portion, we find it has one pair of the forelimbs, they are short, and one pair of the hind limbs, they are very sturdy and thick. See here, the forelimbs and the hind limbs, they have digits. They are clawless. Clawless and the horny like structure is not present in them. See here, in the forelimbs, they have four digits. In the hind limbs, they have five digits. So in the hind limbs, in between the digits, can you see some thin fold of the skin there? That is what is said to be as webbed digits. So they have the adaptation for the aquatic mode of the living also. When they just jump into the water body, they are capable of swimming. So they are amphibians. See here, there is a snout. And when you open the mouth, you can see they have the omarine teeth only in the upper jaw. So males, they do have 
males they do have the ocal sac they have the ocal sacs within them they croak they croak during the mating season and they do have in one of the digits at the base the nuptial pads so that is how the male and the female can be distinguished well children i had told you something about the nictitating membrane let us just see how this nictitating membrane works see this is the frog look at the eye to protect the inner parts of the eye the nictitating membrane closes when the frog jumps into the water body well the next specimen is calotus it's a garden lizard so just don't get confused with that of the chameleon so this is garden lizard you can see the whole body is covered by hard scales you call them to be as scutes body is divisible into head neck trunk and then the tail see here the head bears one pair of the eyes here also you can find they have the eyelids then the just behind the eyes you would be finding there is an opening of the ear a very wide crescent shaped mouth one pair of the nostrils but on the dorsal median line you can find the spines so it's all flat now but when the animal is enraged the spines they just become erect like this so they have two pairs of the limbs and the limbs are pentadactyle pentadactyle in the sense they have five digits there and each of the digit will have the claws so we say they are clawed pentadactyle limbs during breeding season the males they show the coloration there would be the change in the color that's one of the process to attract the female a courtship behavior can you see the tail here it's very lengthy usually keeps coiling around the branches of the tree the next animal specimen here is columba livia belongs to the phylum chordata class is aves its common name is pigeon look at the body here also it is streamlined boat shaped body and the whole body is covered by feathers and the body is divisible into head neck trunk and then there is a short feathery tail see here in the head portion one pair of the eyes is there and then just behind the eye would be a pair of the ears but it is covered by the beautiful feather then there is a beak mouth and the mouth has a protrusion of the beak inside the mouth they do not bear the teeth at the base of the beak there is presence of one pair of the nostrils see this bird's mouth do not bear the teeth within it well the beak is modified according to their feeding habits if it is frugivorous in the sense fruit eating the shape of the beak itself is different if it is carnivorous the shape of the beak is different anyhow the beak has a hard horny sheathing that is called to be as ramphotheca so in the trunk portion you can find they have two pairs of the limbs the four limbs they have been modified into the organs of flight that's the wings there and here the hind limbs are slightly shifted forwards so that they can balance the body children can you see half the portion of this hind limbs it gives us the evidence that these birds they have been evolved from the reptiles how look at the limb here it's having the scale rather than the feathers so this is one of the evidence that shows that this has been evolved from the reptiles so we call these birds to be as glorified reptiles look at the feet the hind limbs they have four digits out of which the first digit it is lying opposite to the other three so such an arrangement 
in the uh, clothed toes, it is for the perching. So perching in the sense, it helps in holding the branches of the tree. Look at the bird. It's beautiful plumage that would be helping us identify the bird there. So whenever you want to identify a bird, so the ornithologist will be very much aware of the coloration of the plumage and the shape of the uh, beak of a bird. Well, this is about Columba livia. Well, the last member that we are supposed to study, it is the rabbit. This is about the pigeon and this is about the rabbit now. So this belongs to the class Mammalia. Okay. Anyhow, let me make it very clear. There are three mammals as the specimens here. One it is me who is explaining. The other one it's the stuffed rabbit. And one more is you who is observing it. So rabbit has a scientific name, Orictolagus lagomorpha. The whole body of this is covered by hair. The body is divisible into head, neck, trunk, and a very furry tail, which is very small. Head bears a pair of the eyes, a pair of the nostrils, and a mouth there. And there would be the whiskers, vibrissae. We call it to be as vibrissae. One special feature we find amongst the mammals is that the presence of the external ears. This ear pinna is the unique feature there. Then the upper lip at its center is clefted through which the incisors are projected out. We call it to be as bunny teeth. Even if you have so, we call it so. Then few prominent stiff hair, they are the whiskers. Can you see here? They are the whiskers. They are present on the upper lips. They are tactile. So they have the power of sensing the touch. Then males have a small cylindrical muscular penis and a pair of the scrotal sacs in which a pair of the testes are lodged. In case of the females, there is presence of the ulva and also they have a mammary glands which open ventrally that just secretes the milk to nourish the young ones. And that was about the studies of the specimens in our biology lab. Thank you.